Hello healers and health seekers, it's me, Ichoda. Healing with medical medium information for four years and six months now. I am healing from mast cell activation disorder, dysautonomia, POTS, migraines, uh, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, chronic fatigue syndrome, hypothyroid, acne, rosacea, eczema, fibromyalgia, and a whole list of other symptoms and conditions. I have healed so many things in these past few years and I am so incredibly grateful for all of it. And today I am here for What's Up Wednesday. That's where I come in and I talk about my healing journey and what I've been up to and what's been going on with me. And it's been a minute since I've done one of these. So I got a little bit to catch up on and I'm probably not gonna remember exactly where I left off because I usually try to make these every week, but lately that has not been feasible. So it's been a few weeks. Here's what's going on with me. I just finished round 11 of the advanced 369 cleanse. I have not done any of them consecutively. Uh, that's where a little bit of this stuff is coming from. <laughs> that's where that's coming from. It's detox. It's stuff coming up and out and coming up and out of my liver and it always shows on my face first. Uh, so that was round 11. I've never done rounds consecutively but this time I decided I'm going to and I went right into round 12. So now I am on as of the filming of this video, don't know about as of the uploading, but as of the filming of this video on day two of round 12. This is, this is Muffins, my pug. She will be providing the snore track for the video. That's how she does. So, oh my gosh, what has been going on? It's been so many weeks that I feel like there's a lot to catch up on. I mean, you know the energy in this world is heavy. It is heavy. And I have felt lately like I cannot keep up with anything. Like I feel like just overwhelmed by basically my daily tasks. Like just stuff I used to be able to do with ease. I have more energy because of the cleanse and I can do them all. It's not that. It's just that I feel really overwhelmed. And I think it's just the energy of the world and I'm feeling overwhelmed by that. And overwhelmed by all of the things that are going on. And it just feels like there's never enough hours in the day to get everything done. So on the cleanse, and the reason I went back on the cleanse, well, a friend of mine was doing it and she was like, hey, a few of us are gonna do it. Do you wanna do it together? And I was like, yeah, I do. And because I had been kind of meaning to do another round for a while and I noticed, okay, and the reason I also wanted to do it again is because A, it would get me back on all raw. I noticed that when I let cooked food in in the evenings, because when I make, like the weather's cooler, right? So I've been making soups and casseroles and things like that and mostly soups. <laughs> And um, I noticed that when I eat cooked food like every night, I just get a little bit heavy, heavier. It's, it's fine. I mean, it's all healthy stuff. I still don't eat salt. I still don't eat fat. It's, it's all healing foods. Everything that I eat and make is healing foods. And so I'm not, it's like, it's not like I'm eating anything that's off menu or anything like that. But I just notice that it can be a little bit dehydrating and it can be, it can drain my energy a bit. I just have more energy when I eat all raw. And it's not that I can't incorporate any cooked foods or anything like that. It's just that if I do, I need to also be careful to only do it in the evening and to do it, make sure that I eat raw food with it. Now, when I eat soups, I tend to not eat raw with the soups. I'll try to throw in something that's raw at the end, like scallions or something like that, but I don't always remember. And so I just start feeling a little bit more sluggish, a little bit less energy. 
slightly more brain fog. I feel like just every so much conflicting energy in the world right now and I don't know there's just so much going on <laughs> that it feels like that adds to the brain fog and it feels like there's other stuff going on that adds to like other increased symptoms and I've had some increased symptoms lately the past couple months like my shingle symptoms with the itching that also is the dry air so that makes it worse it's like I already kind of had the symptom but then the air is super dry in the house even when I have the humidifier running in the house it's just a lot like it's it makes my skin really dry and itchy even when I'm extra hydrated it's still like it's just uh, it's a lot so that is happening too because of the cooler weather, because I'm outside less, and even when I am outside, a lot of times the air is dry outside too. So, that is, oh, the itching is getting to me, like the dry skin. And I, I put body butter on, cream and stuff. I put aloe on it, I do stuff like that, but it's still like, it's just so itchy. The dry skin <laughs> makes my skin dry and itchy. I hate it. Um, but, okay, so I just did a round of the 369 Advanced Cleanse, which gives me more energy, it makes me feel less overwhelmed, it makes me feel more positive about things. I don't feel as heavy. That being said, this last round of the 369 Cleanse, like every round I do is different, so it always kind of has a little bit of a different vibe to it or energy there's always different stuff going on in the world when I do a cleanse and in my life but this time there was a lot of releasing like a lot of emotional releasing like big stuff big stuff coming up and uh, I had originally started doing the cleanse with a group of people it was a small group it was just four of us but I felt like I got halfway through it and I was like, I need to pull back because I just felt like I was being triggered by being in the group. And it wasn't their fault. It wasn't anything they did. It was just, I noticed that I needed to, like I was like, okay, I need to kind of take internal inventory and kind of pull back and just be with myself. And not like in a withdrawing way where it's like sometimes if I get really depressed or down, I withdraw from everybody and I don't talk to people, although I haven't done this in a long time. I just, that's what I used to do. But it's not like that. It was more like, oh, okay, I need to remove external stimuli that I could use to get my wounds hooked into. You know, like I just need to regroup on my own. And so that's what I did. And then I sort of came out of it and then was able to just kind of, it's like finish the cleanse, just doing my thing and not letting myself get hooked by ridiculous things. You know, sometimes you just get triggered by really goofy stuff and it doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with the people out there. And honestly, it doesn't have anything to do with you. And it's just a wound. It just, things get hooked into it and it, it's like, oh, you can, it's like you can use those things, you know, you can use it to be like, oh, you know, th it's this and not that. And I don't know. Anyway, I, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to go into it because it's not about what happened. It's more, or even what I was triggered by. It's more just the fact that I was triggered and letting really ridiculous things trigger me. And... I needed to just step back from that so I did it worked and I was able to like regroup and within a day I was okay it just I needed a day I honestly here's what I did I took a day I was in bed all day I didn't do anything but lay in bed and cry <laughs> and um, also in that like I wasn't on my phone I wasn't on my computer I just laid in my bed and just kind of stared at nothingness. I didn't even have my window open, so I wasn't even looking outside. I was just kind of laying in a dark room 
moping and crying and occasionally sort of napping, but mostly just moping and crying. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to take a day and do that. I don't know. And I did a weird thing in this particular round of the cleanse, round 11, where the day that I took moping and crying, I had my lemon water with me that I brought into the room. I brought a bunch of bananas into the room and rather than getting up and making the cleanse foods, because I kind of just felt like I couldn't, I just ate the bananas and drank lemon water all day until the evening when my husband came in and he's like, let me make your kale soup. And he made it for me and then I ate that and I came out of the room. And I felt a lot better at the end of that day. I really did. I just, I released a lot, I think. And that's not on cleanse to be doing the way I ate, but I decided that even though I had done that, I wasn't gonna use it to break my cleanse. I was just gonna keep going as though I hadn't done that and keep going with my cleanse. And this round of the cleanse, as far as like getting the foods in and eating the right things uh, and sticking to it as written was kind of the worst I've done as far as when I just kind of went through the whole thing because I also forgot almost every day to drink the extra liter of water which I totally need right now because it's so dry and everything's so dehydrating that it's like you would think that I wouldn't forget. I kind of have trouble with it sometimes because you're supposed to be drinking water away from food and I'm eating all day, so, or I feel like I am. I'm either preparing food or, anyway, I just, I have found ways to do it, but then, so I kind of didn't do that for the whole cleanse. A couple days I got the water in, but most days I didn't. But I did get my extra lemon water and I did get the tea, so that's good, and I got all the foods. And then there was a couple days where I like ran out of a couple ingredients for the things that I needed to make. <laughs> So I had to improvise, which I did, and it was fine. And then, so on day seven, I forgot the second celery juice. Like, just totally forgot it. Like, I remembered at the early part of the day, and then as the day progressed, just totally forgot to make it. So I didn't have it, and then I thought, oh no, I need to do two days of the second celery juice. So I just added a day on to the cleanse, and ended up making it 10 days. <laughs> And so I did, I did a second celery juice for the next two days and then I did day nine. So it was kind of like a really like, it was all pretty much like kind of not the three design advanced cleanse, but I was like, no, I'm calling it around because I mostly stuck to everything. Anyway, I don't recommend doing it that way, but because I know that I will do future rounds of the cleanse, I was like, I'm just gonna call this a round and it's just an imperfect round. And it would be different if I was only doing one round of the cleanse or something, but it's my 11th round. I knew I was gonna go right into 12, so I was like, eh, we'll just call it a messy round. <laughs> it wasn't as written, but I still had incredible emotional release, incredible physical release. <laughs> I released seven pounds of weight, which is probably inflammation and water weight fully. I think most, a lot of my extra weight is anyway. Uh, not that I don't have fat too, because I do, but so I think probably a good portion is water. Okay, so the other thing about that cleanse, this particular round of the cleanse, round 11, was that Usually, okay, not, I can't say usually. Honestly, it's always different, it's always different. But the past few rounds of the Advanced 369 Cleanse on day nine, which is juice day, no matter how much juice I drink, by the end of the day, I end up feeling a little bit like edgy. I don't know how to say it. A little bit edgy and um, not like irritable, but just kind of like, uh, like, like, it's too much. 
uh, <laughs> just kind of like that. And a little bit, um, like I feel cold, like really cold. I'll get really cold throughout the day. And then by the nighttime, when I lay in bed, no matter how many covers I have heaped on me, and this was in the summer too, no matter how many covers I would put heaped on me, I would like shiver in the bed until I would fall asleep. And then finally, it's like finally my body temperature would regulate and I'd be okay throughout, like I'd sleep fine and I'd be okay throughout the night. But it was, it was just a kind of like a weird going, um, it's just that cold thing and it would just happen i think there might have been a round or two of the cleanse where it actually would even happen on day seven and day eight but day nine i would just be like i'm so cold and that my friends is a liver issue that is when your liver is just it has problems that's why we get cold that's like thick blood and it's viral so I don't by any mean think it's the fault of the cleanse. I know for a fact that it's, you know, that's my body and, and it's just letting me know, like I'm having some issues and it's part of the process. And so that's why I keep doing rounds of the cleanse, but I'm always like day nine used to be my favorite day of the cleanse because I get to drink all these delicious juices and I love that part of it. But these past few rounds, day nine has been kind of like, oh, okay, I'll just have to grip my teeth and get through it because of the shivering and the cold and the, and the symptoms. And sometimes I'll have like a light headache at the end of the day and I didn't this time. Um, but again, I only had like a little bit of that shivering and it was like kind of like right as I was going to bed, but it, it didn't, I wasn't shivering. It was just, I was a little bit cold. And it's winter, so it, it's actually cold in here. It's actually cold in here. And this time I really wasn't that cold. And I was, you know, able to go to sleep and stuff like that. So I feel like, yay, more stuff is moving out because obviously like it's getting less intense for day nine. And I was able to then be like, I'm just gonna go right into the next round and just keep going with this which I have not in 11 rounds been able to feel like I could do. I always felt like I needed a break a little bit to have like some warm food. Not this time, I was just like, it's cool. I'll drink my tea, it's fine. And I'll keep going. So here I am on day two and I'm still feeling pretty good. And you know, just having a little bit of stuff come out on my face and that's okay. I don't, I don't, who's gonna see me? Just the people watching the video. <laughs> and that's not many, so I'm not worried. Um, I love each and every one of you. And I'm glad you're all here. And I know that my audience is not huge and broad. And honestly, even if it was, I'm at the age where I just don't care anymore. I did videos for however long it's been since I started doing videos with my skin so ravaged and this is nothing. So I'm just like, no, this is fine. Plus it's part of me updating my whole journey is to show what's actually going on. And so this happens and it'll go away and it's fine and I don't care. Cause as I continue to eat more raw and cleanse more, it's gonna come out. So that's pretty cool, right? Like I'm seeing progress. I'm seeing so much coming out and I'm seeing, I'm really seeing movement and I love that. And that happens no matter what, like every time I do the advanced 369 cleanse, I know that it's gonna move the needle. So it's exciting. That's my impetus. That's my motivation to keep on doing it because it keeps moving the needle and I got a needle that keep, needs to be moved. So, I mean, I live on this planet and I have a backlog of 40 plus years of, you know, toxic stuff going on with my body. So I needed to, there's a lot to clean up. My liver's doing big work, man, big work. Uh, what else? Do I need to talk about the food for the cleanse? I mean, I literally eat the same thing almost every cleanse. Oh, you know what? I did do something different this time because 
I had it in my mind. Oh, that's right. Okay, I almost forgot about all of this. I had it in my mind before I did the 369 Advanced Cleanse this time. I kind of forgot that it was like right before Thanksgiving, right? I was like, I was like, I'm going to do a papaya mono cleanse. I need to do that. My digestion's been a little bit, oh, that's the other thing. Okay. So that's the other thing about when I eat cooked every day and I forget to eat the greens with it. Okay. She's getting loud. Um, and I forget to eat the greens with it and stuff like that. Like if I'm not eating something raw, it doesn't have to be greens, but something raw. Um, I, my digestion starts to get a little bit like, eh, a little bit questionable and things start getting gurgly and I start getting a little gassy and here's the great thing. So when I'm eating in a way that fully supports my body and my liver, I do not have gas. I don't. I only, the only time I will have any gas is right before I really need to use the bathroom. She's loud. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> goodness. She really wants to be featured in the video. She, her snores. I love that little puck. Um, and everything is regular, you know, like it all, it's just, I don't have those problems. And I started getting to where it was like every day having gas. And I was like, okay, this is not normal for me. I got to Something's gotta be done. I thought, okay, you know, papaya is so cleansing. I was like, I, it's very gentle and it's, it's very cleansing and it's raw. And I thought I'm going to do a papaya mono cleanse is what I thought. So I called up the grocery store where I know we can get papayas. And I was like, Hey, can I order a case? And they're like, yeah, okay. And I'm like, great. So I ordered a case of papayas. And then I was telling a friend of mine, oh, I'm going to do the papaya mono cleanse. And I'm, and I was like, uh, and we were talking about cleansing and I said, wanted to cleanse with me. And she's like, I'm going to wait till after Thanksgiving. And then I realized it was like Tuesday of the week of Thanksgiving, which I was on a Thursday for those of you who aren't in America. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, Oh, what am I thinking? It was Tuesday the day that I would have been picking up the case of papayas. I mean, and I thought, Oh my gosh, I did not even realize what time it was. And that's crazy that I ordered a case of papayas like right before Thanksgiving. So I thought, okay. And since I had to pick them up on Tuesday, I was like, well, I'll just go ahead and do a papaya mono cleanse until Thanksgiving. And then I will switch and I'll do the three, six, nine cleanse with my friend. And, uh, that's not really what happened. So, <laughs> Sometimes I get lofty ideas about what I'm capable of and what I will do. And I did almost a full day of the papaya mono cleanse before I was just like, I can't take it anymore. And then I think, what did I have in the night? I can't remember if I had the kale soup that I love. It's the kale salad from the Cleanse to Heal book, but I do the blended version of it, except for I don't blend the cucumber or the asparagus. I leave that in chunks so that I have like a, a hearty soup. I love it. It's like my favorite thing to eat all the time, honestly. <laughs> and so anyway, I didn't make it even a full day on the papaya mono cleanse. And I was like, wow, I really overestimated myself here. And I still had all these papayas and I was like, well, but I still have to eat them. So I was like, well, I'll just incorporate them into the advanced cleanse. So after Thanksgiving, after we had the food, which again, like I can't eat a lot of that stuff, that cooked stuff. And I made, I made three kinds of pie. I made the all medical medium recipes. I made the recipe he posted for pumpkin pie. I made the recipe he posted for cherry pie. And I made the recipe for the Dutch apple pie, which was absolutely hands down the favorite. And the crust on all these recipes is, oh gosh, it's good. 
it's got oat flour in it. I don't usually eat grains, so I only took like a couple of bites and then immediately wished I had not taken any bites because I was like, that was way too good. I'm gonna be thinking about that now. <laughs> so anyway, my family crazy love. I made a second apple pie because they loved it so much. So I had some of the food for Thanksgiving, but again, my digestion was already a little bit like not great. And so it just, I was like, no. I really need to be on a cleanse. So I think it was the following Monday that we started the Advanced 369 cleanse. And I just, what did I eat? I think I just did a couple of raw days. I might have had cooked food at night, but I don't even remember if I did. I don't remember, I don't remember now. Anyway, I incorporated, that was a really long-winded way of saying, I incorporated the rest of the papaya into the Advanced 369 in place of, you can, if you need to, use papaya in place of the bananas in the heavy metal detox smoothie, and there's a version of the liver rescue smoothie, which you can have for lunch on the Advanced 369 cleanse, where you can have papaya in instead of the bananas. And so I just did that. So. I had both smoothies each day instead of spinach soup for lunch. I had the liver rescue 369 so that I could eat all that papaya and ate all the papaya for that cleanse. It was amazing. I ate a whole box of papaya. I think that papaya was very cleansing and also having twice the wild blueberries every day because I had it in the heavy metal detox smoothie and the liver rescue smoothie. So that's more wild blueberries than I usually have. So the papaya and the wild blueberries was just going to work. And that was pretty incredible. I might do that again, actually, intentionally, because having the extra papaya was really good. I think I only had banana like the last two days. And then because there's no melon available right now because it's cold, I had the blended papaya for day nine as the substitute for the melon. I had a couple of jars of that. I ate all the papaya. I did a good job. I'm proud of myself because I ate a whole case of papayas in a week. <laughs> yeah. All by myself. Nobody else would eat it. Nobody else in my house likes papaya and they won't eat papaya. So that was all me, man. All me. Okay. So yeah, that's been the food. That's what I had for the cleanse. I mean, the menus for the cleanse are in the Cleanse to Heal book. You've heard me talk about it enough if you've watched any of my videos, and we all know what the menus are. So if you don't, get the Cleanse to Heal book, and then you'll know. <laughs> so I did all the other stuff, but I, yeah, had to buy on the smoothies. It's been a roller coaster. I think you're all probably experiencing that. And so I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know about what's going on. It's just been, it's just been a lot. It's just been a lot. Okay. I guess here's sort of another thing is I sort of noticed that with social media, I had started to follow. Okay. I mean, I'm a truther at heart. I always have been. I always have valued the truth over over my own comfort and over anything else. I want to know the truth. I've always felt like there's something going on behind the scenes and I like to pull, uh, you know, how in the Wizard of Oz and they say, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Well, I'm the one that walks up and rips the curtain down. So, you know, I'm just like, no, I need to know what's going on. And on my healing journey, it's been very important for me to keep my energy sort of clear of a lot of really negative stuff. Cause there's, I mean, there's a lot of evil on this planet, like genuine evil. And so it can be really easy to lose yourself down a rabbit hole of chasing the evil and wanting to know like all the, like what, what is the evil up to now? I got to keep track of it. And I think that it is important to expose and shine a light on the evil at times. And I think when you're healing for your own adrenals and, and not running your adrenaline, it's also important to know when it's time to pull back and focus on the light. Because I don't, 
I think it's not good to lose ourselves in the darkness and lose ourselves in the evil and getting mad at the evil. And especially when that focus and looking at those things starts to pull in fear. Because we can traumatize ourselves by focusing on those things too much and then that can sort of separate our soul from us and then pull in fear in the empty spaces. And when you start feeling that fear, to me, that's a time to know, okay, if I'm feeling fear, it's time to pull back and regroup and stop focusing on these things for a while. I already know they're happening. Me focusing on them is not going to make them happen less. And it's not helping anybody for me to get into to a fear space. So I needed to pull back from looking at those things. It's not like my head's in the sand about it because man, I, there's so much evil. Oh boy, can you go down any rabbit hole at any point of chasing the evil? And you know what? People who have stronger adrenals than I <laughs> and haven't gone through chronic illness or maybe have and still have stronger adrenals than I are out there doing battle with this evil in the world and I fully support it because they're they are fighting the good fight they are really fighting the good fight and with social media and people becoming more aware despite all of the censorship that happens on every social media platform people are working hard us people the people the little people not the big systemic big guys who tell you what to think but the little people who we can think for ourselves are sharing information amongst ourselves and sharing information with each other and we are the journalists on the ground and we are the voice for each other and for our freedom and our sovereignty and people are sharing information and it matters and we are keeping ourselves and each other informed by doing that and I think that is incredibly important it's incredibly important for us to know that we have that power and we have that sovereignty and we have that ability and to keep fighting that fight I also think that when you're healing, it's very important to focus on your healing. <laughs> At times when you see that fighting that fight is becoming detrimental to you and your own family. And I find it very difficult sometimes to know what's the balance? Where's the balance? How do I keep spreading light in the world? How do I keep shining a light on darkness without traumatizing other people, without adding to the trauma in the world? How do I share my light and my love and do what I can to uplift and add light to the world without burying my head in the sand, but also knowing that even if I'm not looking directly at something and shouting about it right at the minute doesn't mean that I'm not supporting it or championing that cause in the way that I do. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Anyway, something I struggle with. It's something I struggle with. So recently with social media, I unfollowed several of the accounts that I had more recently followed, but I had also become troublesome because those accounts post so frequently that the amount of information that I was seeing about the darkness that's happening was outweighing the things that uplift me. And it was bringing in fear. And I thought, it's, that's not productive. It's not productive for me to bring in fear. So I'm going to unfollow them for a while. I may follow them again, but we'll see. They're fighting the good fight and I support it and they're championing the causes that I support and it's wonderful. And for me right now, in order to maintain my sanity and my sense of self and my ability to keep myself in the light and keep myself 
grounded, I needed to unplug from those things because the other part of that is that, you know, social media can spread our energy pretty thin because we're, it's like all of these things want our attention from all of these different directions. And if we give too much, it's like too much of our attention gets diverted. It's like, it, uh, for me, it feels like it fractures my sense of self and my ability to kind of, yeah, stay grounded and hold myself together. So uh, social media is tricky, man. I gotta be really careful with it. And I love Instagram. Like I'm, I love it. I don't really like Facebook and I just don't even, I have an account on Twitter that gets posted to from Instagram, but I don't go on Twitter. I don't read Twitter. Cause it's Twitter's just, it's a dumpster fire to me. I can't handle Twitter. It's too much. It's too much coming at me. Even Facebook can be like that. So, I mean, like I, I curated my Facebook to be like only I've, I've hidden everybody from my feed. Any personal accounts mostly are hidden. Not all of them, but most of them are hidden from my feed of people I'm friends with. And only certain groups that I'm in actually show up in my news feed. And it's mostly stuff about like birds in the area that I live in and medical medium information and um, animal communication, like just really uplifting things. Uh, local plant groups where people are sharing plants and <laughs> like things that uplift me only. And then if I want to go down a rabbit hole or look on a page that has other stuff, then I will do that. But then it's like a choice I make rather than something being foisted upon me. And it's different. It's more empowering that way. Okay, I'm just gonna say one more thing about that because a lot of times it can look like somebody's championing a cause that you really believe in. And at the same time, it's very possible if the championing, championing of that cause looks like a lot of fear mongering, sometimes to me that's like false light. My friend calls it controlled opposition. So sometimes it's like, man, it looks like what this person is you know, doing and what this group or organization is doing is really good. But every time you read a post, do you feel good about what they're doing or do you feel angrier or more confused or more fearful or does it hurt you in some way? That's kind of what I look at. So anyway, it's just important to sort of have that discernment and realize like, oh, how is this really making me feel? And how is this really, like, do I feel empowered by it? Like at the end of it, am I looking at it going, yeah, man, we are fighting the good fight. Or am I looking at it going, oh my God, oh my God, what's going to happen next? You know, if it's putting a lot of fear, then maybe I don't need to focus on that. Maybe I don't need to be looking at that because that's not how I want to feel in my day. And I woke up this morning and I, I don't know if I had a dream or if for some reason when I woke up, this just popped into my head and it was just coming through. But it was an experience that I've had like 20, 25 years ago. No, 30 years ago now. It was an experience I've had like 30 years ago now. It was not a pleasant experience. I have only a partial memory of what happened. Uh, and I don't want to know the rest. Um, there's no point in knowing the rest of what happened. It was just an unpleasant experience. So that was kind of a little bit looping through my mind today when I woke up and I thought, okay, I know from experience that a lot of times that what is happening when I'm having something like that randomly pop into my head, a memory from 30, 40 years ago, 25, 20 years ago, whatever, a memory from the past pop into my head and just get stuck there for seemingly no reason is a lot of times that it's old toxins are moving out of my body. And as they're moving out of my body, it's kind of like the memory filters through too. And that's good news because yay, for those toxins moving out, I'm ready for them to go. And so I thought, okay, 
Um, the fruit picking meditation is really good for anxiety and PTSD, which is kind of what I was starting to feel about this whole situation. And so before I even got out of bed, I did the fruit picking meditation that is on medical medium, Apple podcasts. And then after that, because it's quick and also helpful and helps connect you, reconnect you to your soul. I did the stargazing meditation and both of those were so incredibly helpful and they helped me start my day in a great note and I felt better and the looping had gone and it was done. And I just went into my day and then I just felt all this like creative energy and I felt good and I highly recommend it. I've been doing the moon meditation every night as part of my bedtime routine. So I just don't even go to bed without doing it no matter what time it is. It's, it's a, not a long meditation anyway. So I always do the moon meditation every night. And then today when I woke up, I was like, oh, that, and I was like, oh, Fruit picking meditation sounds good for that. <laughs> I'm gonna do that because this it felt like a little bit of anxiety. So just wanted to put that in there at, and add it as like, it was really helpful. On that note, I miss you my healers and health seekers. <laughs> I'm sorry I've been so terrible about answering comments. I did go through and answer a bunch of comments uh, yesterday, I think it was and the ones that I had not answered because I do try to answer all of the comments and I will try to do better. I can't make any promises. It's, it is what it is lately, right? Like we're all just doing our best, aren't we? We're just doing what we can to get through it. But just know that I love you and I'm with you and I think about you and I love hearing from you and knowing what is going on with you. And I would love to know how you are. If you feel compelled to comment, please do. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're well. If you like the video, give a thumbs up below. You can subscribe to the channel if you want by hitting the subscribe button over there or ding the bell next to it if you want to be notified when I post a new video. Just take a deep breath. That's my favorite part every single time in every meditation when Anthony says, take a deep breath in. and release. I'm always like, ah, uh, it's just, it's like the greatest breath I could take. I don't know. It's just, it's literally my favorite part of every meditation. Every time he says that it, a, it brings me back. If my mind's wandering somewhere, if he says, take a deep breath in, I'm back in the meditation. I'm just like, Oh, I'm here. I'm here. And then I take that deep breath in and it just like, ah, uh, it fills my body with light. <sighs> I love you, my healers and health seekers. Remember, you can heal and remember to stay curious. I love you. I love you. I will see you next time. I hope that's sooner rather than later. Bye-bye.